After a long, grueling season in the NFRN, over 100 full-time competitors have been itching to find their way to a title in their respective series. Now tonight, the NFRN Amateur Cup Series gets the honor of being the first series this season to set their championship contenders in stone. We will get to see who is worthy of standing on the top step of the podium tonight under the lights at the historic Nazareth Speedway in the Pennsylvania 250. Hello again everybody, I'm Colin Denton with RVN. Welcome to the regular season finale of the NFRN Amateur Cup Series. Six drivers have locked themselves into the playoffs so far. Five on wins and one on points, Connor Mays being that one. Along with Chris Harley, Dwayne Calloway, Donnie Moore, Austin Rogers, and Sparky the Sun Devil. They will all be moving on to the playoffs in the final seven races no matter what they do tonight. Meanwhile, a couple other winners, Kyle Law and John Gobert, not officially locked in, but based on the point situation, they should be fine even if they have a bad finish, unless some extreme circumstance happens. Now, we look at the final four spots, and this is the cut line. Right there, you see Jacob Rose and Shane Borland are separated by just one point. Now, obviously, we could see another winner. That would take up one of those spots, but we'll see at least three more drivers clinch their way in on points. That is going to mean that every point is going to matter to these drivers that haven't gotten that victory so far this season. They could go out and get that victory, but... If they don't, they are going to have to get a really good finish tonight to make sure that they don't lose any ground. Someone that's way down there could have a great finish or a victory that moves that entire line down. Or someone that's doing really well right now might have a really bad finish and fall out of the conversation even though they look like a safe bet. This is going to be a wild one to watch and we're going to be watching the points battle all race long. Let's take a look at how they did in the part-timer race. Mike Simpson leading the Truck Series standings, leading this field to green. Also trying to take over the top spot in part-timer standings in this series from Barry Watson, not entered in this race. A little bit of contact in the back of the field from Hunter Cox and Clint McComb, and then a little bit more just a couple laps later from Jasper Rawls and Ryan Parsons, and then a three-wide situation going into turn three. Really going to push those back two up in the middle of the corner. But it looks like Mike Simpson has this all locked down as they go pretty much single file in the back part of the race. So the 74 car are going to hit the checkered flag first and get his eighth start in this series in 12 races. Looking at the other drivers that qualified, Adam Kuhn, Steve Ray, Tyler Reed, James Smith, and Jesse McCona all going to make a start in this one. Jim Fowler just made his debut last race at Peoria. He is going to be on the outside looking in. And Dalton Wise also made a start last week. He will finish in the eighth position, as here are the back four in this part-timer race. Looking at our hot seat driver, it is Kyle Law. And we remember back to last race at Peoria, this helmet cam did not do him any favors. It kind of turned out to be the deciding factor in him getting a four-race probation that lasts throughout the entirety of the first round of the playoffs. However, he still has those two victories and a second-place run at Mirage 2. That kind of led into what turned into a 39th place finish at Peoria. Still enough points to make him our hot seat this time around. We'll see if he's able to keep his cool, and maybe the helmet cam won't catch it. That is going to be it for our pre-race show. Let's go down track side. Time to get the final starting command of the regular season. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Chief Executive Officer of Virginia 529, Mary Morris. Let's go racing. Drivers, start your engines. Yep. Happy. Thank you. Yeah, so Forty-two cars gridded up under the lights at Nazareth. Several of them still have an opportunity to make the 12 driver playoff. Let's take a look at the starting grid for tonight's race, the regular season finale. Shane Boylan is going to start on the pole in the number 60 Krispy Kreme Ford. His performance has been slipping since the middle part of the regular season. With a short track average of 22, he'll try to win from the pole. He is just outside of an open spot. And Sparky the Sun Devil on his outside in the number one Adidas Chevrolet. He is clinched into the playoffs already. In run number two, we have Ryan Kendall, who has eight top 20s on the season, but no top 10s. He'll try to win from place number three. Mike Simpson, not eligible for this championship, finished 21st at Grand Detour earlier this season. In row number three, we have Kyle Buscelli, who is out of contention to make the playoffs no matter what he does. And Jack Freeman is in a must-win situation, no guarantees of making the top 25. TJ Ball, who finished 6th at Grand Detour on pit strategy, is going to be out of contention in these playoffs. The driver that won that race, John Gilbert, will be on the outside in place number 8. 
In row number 5, another driver out of contention, Alexander Rowe, who finished 12th at Peoria. A solid run for him, but can't make the playoffs. Al Callaway finished 10th at Peoria, puts him in a solid situation to make the playoffs. If he can run well tonight, he will round out the top 10. In row number 6, we have Craig Martin, who finished 10th and 11th on both of our short tracks this season. Ray Chapman to his outside, finished 12th at Pig Speed Dome. Starting P13, Robert Harrison, two top fives on the short tracks, finished 5th at Peoria. He's in a solid situation right now to make the playoffs on points. Dwayne Calloway on his outside. He is already clinched in. Row 8 will see two drivers that already clinched their way into the playoffs. Donnie Moore, who finished ninth at Grand Detour, and Chris Harley, who won at Pig Speed Dome and finished runner-up at Grand Detour. In row number 9, we have Anthony Lopez, who finished ninth at Pig Speed Dome, and Harris Arvin Alonzo, who finished 35th at Peoria after looking like he had a solid run, and he is a little bit further out from the cut line than he was going into that race. And around at the top 20, A.J. Jones on the inside, 9.5 average finish on short tracks. Andy Coleman in 20th position, finished 6th at Peoria, 11th and 16th on the short tracks. That is how it's going to look on the front half of the grid. We'll look at the back half going down on the bottom of the screen. Obviously, this is a tense situation for many of these drivers. Some of them are going to be fighting for their championship hopes this year. Obviously, the field is just a little bit smaller than it is at the Elite Cup Series level. Only 12 drivers are going to make it. We've already seen six of them clinch their way in. One of them being on points, Connor Mays. No matter what he does tonight, he is going to make it. We see Kenny Knox. He's a driver that's starting a little bit further back than he would like to be, as well as Jacob Rose. Both of those drivers starting in the back four rows. But at the moment, they are above the cut line. If we get a new winner, Jacob Rose would drop out. We'll have to see what Kenny Knox can do starting from near the rear of the field. Here comes the 42 cars around the final corner. Green flag flies here at Nazareth. Race number 12 underway. In comes our chase leaderboard, and this is live as they run. As it stands, Kenny Knox is going to drop out. Al Callaway gets in. Leads Craig Martin by just one point. Eric Van Arsdale just above by seven. Robert Harrison safe with 30 points above. Shane Borland, we talked about him. He was just outside of the cut line. If he's able to win tonight, he'll put himself right at the top. He'll guarantee his spot no matter what he does in points. But he just got a bonus point right there. That will keep him a little bit safer if he's able to run well tonight. Now Craig Martin is above the cut line as he's been able to pass a few drivers. Al Callaway now three points out. And you can see those two drivers are actually running right next to each other, but Callaway's on the outside, Martin on the inside. He's going to have a really good advantage getting around some drivers. Callaway's going to start falling back. As you can see, now the gap is at four points. Callaway on back-to-back -back top tens, now in the 13th position, and obviously this is going to be big for his playoff hopes, and obviously his brother has made it. He is trying to also make it into the field. Meanwhile, Kenny Knox, we talked about him falling out. Entered the race 16 plus on the playoff cut line. Now he's 11 back. You can see he's in last place at the moment. But at this point, you're at the back of the field. You can't lose anymore. All you can do is start making up positions. You can see now he's just down to 9 points below the cut line. As these drivers shift positions, they'll be shifting in points. So every spot matters. And it doesn't matter if you're making the pass. Someone above you might start slipping and that's important. You can see Eric Van Arsdale starting to slip as he is also just three points above the cut line now as Martin's gaining on him, and he's drifting back closer to Callaway. He entered the race 19 above the cut line, so even further ahead than Kenny Knox. However, at this point, he's still ahead. Now Callaway has brought the gap down to one point once again, just next to Van Arsdale as Martin has now passed him up and is two points ahead. Robert Harrison, though, he's sitting pretty safe. He wasn't clinched coming in, but... All he has to do is run solidly. He's in 19th position, so he has a few spots to spare. You just want to keep it conservative. Don't do anything stupid to risk your spot when it looks like you're pretty safe. And obviously, it doesn't look like he has a race-winning car right now. So he might just want to stick where he's at just to make sure he gets in. Ryan Kendall trying to chase down Shane Borland. You can see that gap is really stretched out. Borland is not paying any favors to any of these drivers. Kendall, the only Pennsylvania driver in the field, and I believe the only one racing this weekend. Truck Series isn't present here, and the Elite Cup Series, I don't believe, had anyone, so he's pretty much a fan favorite here. 
Anthony Lopez also tracking decently in the top 10. Short track average of 13.5, one top 10 this year. And he is just off of the 10 drivers that we're showing on the right. I believe he is just outside of that line. So obviously he has a lot more to build up and he would basically have to win at this point. He's not in a must win situation mathematically, but it's probably gonna be safe for him to try to go for the victory. Meanwhile, Ray Chapman, he is trying to tr chase down a spot in the playoffs as well. 19th in points coming into this race, while meanwhile his teammate, Connor Mays, came into this race first. Obviously hasn't gotten a victory, but he is clinched in on points no matter what he does. So Chapman trying to make sure that he can get his team two for two into the playoffs this year. Callaway is trying to track down some drivers as he's slipped six points below the cut line. Craig Martin extending that gap, and Eric Van Arsdale has kind of gotten his situation under control as now he's back to 11 points above the cut line. But Callaway trying to get to the underside of James Smith, unable to make it happen in the dogleg. While Kenny Knox is still trying to build up some positions a little bit further back in the field. We talked about him being last place at one point and still seven points below the cut line. He'll make a move to the inside of Connor Mays, the current points leader. New paint scheme tonight. Dirty Bird Records on board the car for the first time. He would like to represent them as he heads into the playoffs, but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for him. Looking at Noah Kim, and his season has really taken a downhill turn. Look at the standings progression for this 38 driver. You can see he's been in the top 10 all the way up until last race where he dropped to 18th. And you can see there's finishes outside the top 20 in the past four races. Two 38th place finishes in a row. He's going to be a long shot to make the playoffs now. Meanwhile, up front, it's Shane Boland leading the way after 10 laps. Clint, Tommy here again. Look, I really need you to push it these last few laps. Go away, Tommy. Take the higher line a little closer to the wall. I bet we pick up a few more spots. My position is fine, Tom. Okay. I mean, I expected a little more today out of Mr. Boyer, but if you want to settle, that's uh, that's fine. All right, then. Higher line it is. Sign up for NASCAR Fantasy Live on NASCAR.com. Trouble, Clint Boyer. Into the wall. Caution is out. Welcome back to NFRN Amateur Cup Series round number 12, the regular season finale, the final chance to make your way into the playoffs. And right now for Shane Bolin, he's led every lap and trying to see if he can get himself in on a win. Here is Connor Mays. We mentioned that he is the current points leader. And right now he is fading back quite a bit. And right now his point situation is just fine. He's picked up enough points in a lot of top fives this year that he does not have to worry about where he finishes tonight. He is in on points guaranteed. Meanwhile, Jacob Rose, he entered the race one point above the playoff cut line. But at the moment, you can see he is 17 points down. He is the sixth driver in the red. So several drivers have passed him up just this race alone. He's going to have to make up some positions. An aggressive move right there under Andy Coleman as he is really trying to make sure that he gets himself back up into position. It's currently Craig Martin at the cut line just above Kenny Knox who is currently five points below. And Knox is still back there in the field. AJ Jones, he is also in the red. Fourth driver down. He is Four straight finishes outside the top 20. Not a good run for the number four driver who had probably had the best chance between he and his teammate TJ Smith to make the playoffs, at least on points. And right now, neither of them looking too good. Meanwhile, we've got a couple drivers up here that are trying to contend for the victory, but they don't have a top 10 yet this season. Jake Thomas, Kyle Buscelli, and Ryan Kendall are the three drivers in this series that don't have a top 10. Yet two of them are up here contending for the victory. Kendall and Buscelli are running second and third. Trying to work down on Borland, but he is currently dominating this race. Robert Harrison is starting to slip back a little bit. He's currently in the 22nd position. On lap number one, he was 30 points above the cut line, now down to 20 plus. He's going to have to make sure he manages just a little bit better, as there's plenty of points that can be fluctuated as drivers move up and down this running order. Definitely doesn't want to finish, finish last. That would be the minimum of what you can gain here. And Eric Van Arsdale, he's starting to stretch it out just a little bit better. He's currently 13 above the cut line as it just updated. But on that outside line, he's going to start losing some spots, and he's going to have to fix that very quickly to stay in contention. 16 laps in the books. Shane Borland still leading. Hey, man. 
cut me off back there. What you gonna do about it? Oh, man. Can you feel it? The taste of Coca Cola. Where the race is. Fine, fine. We're good. Back at Nazareth, nothing much happening right now. Shane Borland still out front with 18 laps completed. Here comes Chris Harley on the inside. A two-time winner this season. Did it in races three and six. Now trying to see what he can do to gain some extra points, maybe give himself another advantage, but at the moment, midway through this race, he is not in contention to get the victory tonight. Looking ahead from John Gilbert in the 20th position, and this is just really a shame for Colin Lindsay, who's just ahead of him. A runner-up in the Elite Cup Series Championship one season ago. Two straight last place finishes for the 95 driver has put him in a must-win situation to get into the playoffs, and Obviously, even winning, not going to guarantee him a spot if he can't make the top 25. So, tough break for the 95 driver who's just going to try to gain some points tonight. Adam Kuhn working his way through this race. Two top 10s and five starts, but obviously not a great run tonight as he runs in the 40th position. Meanwhile, here's Craig Martin. Eight top 20s on the season, but he's been struggling to get into the top 10. You can see his best finish is 10th place as he currently runs 9th. And that 10th place run actually came at Grand Detour, one of our short tracks, so he obviously has a solid run going on these shorter ovals. And there is Lindsay once again, as we mentioned. Just some bad luck biting him, and he could have been a winner this season. He was one spot away from getting the victory away from Clint McComb at Van Zant and was unable to make the pass with just a little bit of damage he accumulated earlier in the race. And without a drafting partner, that race going green for the back portion of the event. Just unable to get a draft to get him into the first position. So he's going to have to settle for whatever he can do this year and hope to be back in the Elite Cup Series in Season 3. Obviously, no one's plans established for next year. Lindsay is a part of the NFR and 24-hour race. He is on a team and wondering if he'll switch from being an independent driver this year to getting on a team for next season. And a trouble off the dog leg. Joey Radcliffe involved in Connor Mays upside down, as well as Jacob Rose, one of the drivers trying to make the playoffs this race. Major contact, major damage. And the leaders just trying to slow up as they get around this accident scene. So Connor Mays, the points leader coming into this race, he is clinched in on points alone. Obviously, he's not going to get that victory tonight, though, as he's going to drop out of this one. But Jacob Rose, he was one of those drivers that was on the cut line coming into this race. He had a struggle of the night so far. He was trailing, and he is not going to win this one or put himself in a good enough position to make the playoffs. He is out for this season. And that is a tough way to go out. A wreck in the middle of the race. But that is going to set up what should be our lone pit stop of the night since we are past halfway. That means we'll definitely make it there on fuel. If another caution comes out, maybe we'll see drivers try to contend for tires. But the way this race has been going, obviously it seems like track position is key as Shane Boylan has led every lap so far this race. And maybe to get by him, they're going to need to take a tire strategy. But the question is, do you want to risk not having four tires in this last stint? Watching the manufacturer leaders of this race, Borland, Kendall, and Sparky. And it looks like all of them are going for four tires, so... It seems like everyone in the field is going for four tires. And contact there between Kendall. I think he ran into the back of the one car and might have gotten contact as well from the 14. And that's a rough way to leave your pit stall for the 56 car. As there's a little bit of shuffling in between the top 10, but ultimately everyone's going for four tires. No one trying to gamble on strategy. Let's take a look at how this wreck occurred and took a few drivers out. Looks like the 97 had a better apex into the corner than the 53. He was kind of narrow. 
And he's going to turn the 53 right into the outside wall. Head on! What a hit! And Jacob Rose is the first one to run right into that one. Makes the contact with the 97. And then all three of them are exposed on that. Well, the first two are driver's side door first. And it looks like Rose is going to take a blunt hit from Mays right there. Big hit. And then Jay Jefferson is going to hit Mays in his driver's side door. And both of those hits at a high rate of speed is going to put both of them onto their roofs. Jay Jefferson was in a must-win situation, so his shots of making the playoffs were very long. 19-car fan, realistically, he had a shot at going for a playoff spot as well. But it looks like this mistake entering the corner, and not even sure if you can really call it a mistake. It's just a matter of the way that they enter the corner. As you can see, that was a very, it was a very straight hit by the 53. Just a matter of the 97 got a better run in the middle of the corners than the 53 did. On board, Jacob Rose. Now Connor Mays. Kenny Knox is going to slide through this one. That is critical. If he had gotten involved in that one, that would have really shook up the playoffs. Driver that's made a victory happen in the Elite Cup Series, and our hot seat driver, Kyle Law, also able to slide by. And then looking at this pit lane incident, I don't believe Sparky was parked too far, far back. It's just a matter of Kendall didn't turn far enough out of his box and, to avoid contact, and then Buscelli gets involved in it. Another hit to the one car as well. Drama all over the racing surface, but Shane Borland still taking control of this race. Chase Elliott, tearing up the track in the Napa 9 car. It's hard to believe you're only 18. Do you guys even remember what it was like when you were 18? Man. Really? No. Not at all. I do. I was awesome. Whether you're a rookie, veteran, or a legend, conquer the job with Napa know-how. It is true that the NFRN is entering playoff time, but that doesn't mean there's not opportunities to keep signing up for the league. Part-time Truck Series signups are open to anyone that is not a full-timer in the Elite Cup Series, Amateur Cup Series, or Truck Series already. Sign up to attempt qualifying for race number 10. That deadline is yet to be determined. We still have to run races 8 and 9. Those will take place in the next two streams, but those are open. And as well, you'll be entered to run the Open Modified Series. Those are both combined. So get signed up. Link in the description to be able to run those events if you are not a full-timer already. We're just past midway in this one, and there are going to be five drivers dropping out of this one, and those are the five that were the main ones involved in that wreck. 19-car fan, Joey Radcliffe, Jacob Rose, Connor Mays, and Jay Jefferson. A couple of names right there that could have made the playoffs and are going to have their dreams cut short from mid-race accident. Meanwhile, Shaden Borland did not lose any time on pit lane, and he's going to restart with the lead and the fresh rubber. There's been some passing throughout the field tonight. It's just a matter of no one can get to the 60 car right now. Let's take a look back at the chase grid as it stands after that accident. And Craig Martin only leading by three points over Kenny Knox. Obviously, Knox getting around that accident helped him out. Gained him a few points because the drivers in front of him dropped out. We're seeing Herzorov and Alonzo. He has kind of been further back in the field. He has gotten his name onto the board right now and Anthony Lopez looks like he got a little tight with Alexander Rowe right there as he makes a move to the outside trying to make a pass although he's going to be unsuccessful at completing it but now the 37 and the 75 have found their way onto that leaderboard on the right 
Lopez trying to make it work on the outside. Unable to make it work as Rowe really charged in there. Meanwhile, Craig Martin lurking in the back, and that's going to be an important point for him to gain if he can make it to the inside. He's going to try to utilize 75 being on the outside, and here comes Ray Chapman. He is within this conversation as well. You can see he's in single digits between him and the cut line, which Craig Martin currently holds that last spot. And he's going to make the move to the inside of the 82 card. And meanwhile, Kenny Knox working a three-wide situation. Big move. Going to push Kyle Wall up the track as Jake Thomas just fades back. And now the gap is one point. Kenny Knox gets in the 31st position. The big advantage that Knox has right now is he has so many more cars to make a pass on. Martin doesn't have that luxury. As you can see, the 76 working his way to the inside of the 44. He has the opportunity to make more passes. Martin doesn't have that. And going to the inside of the 44, the cut line is now tied. And that chart won't account for tiebreakers, but if there was a tiebreaker, it would go to Knox. Martin has a best finish of 10th, which he would have to do better than the 8th place he has because Knox has a best finish of 2nd. And even then, Knox would still have the tiebreaker if Martin was to get up to 2nd place because Knox would have a best finish then of third. Those tiebreakers just keep going backward in rotation and now Martin has a one point advantage. Oh and he gets a little loose possibly off the front end of Ray Chapman who's still aggressive trying to work his way into position. Sparky working his way on the middle line. He is looking at this battle and wanting to take advantage of it. He might be clinched in but he just wants to run and get some position and get some confidence, consistency, everything he can do for his Ramco team as he worked his way to the inside of Ray Chapman and that's going to force him back for another point. Meanwhile, Robert Harrison, he must be feeling safe right now as he's a little narrow on that turn. James Smith really going to take advantage of that and get around him. But Harrison currently 25 points ahead and with five cars out, he should be in safe position to possibly make sure that his spot is clinched although I can't confirm that mathematically. Looking forward from Jason Bales, who by his standards put together a stellar third place run at Peoria. Right now he's kind of back to his old form where between races one through seven, he was basically always in the 20s. And at the moment he's currently running well back in the field in 37th position. I put him in last among the drivers still in the race, but Trying to see what he can do. But you can see one of those drivers that was in the back, Kenny Knox, trying to work his way around another driver, Jake Thomas. As he gets around him, looks like he's still unable to clean the gap between him and Martin, which still sits at one point. Eric Van Arsdale, just five points ahead, trying to make sure he doesn't fall out of contention. But this is a really tense battle at the cut line as Knox working every line possible to try to make it. Martin extends his gap by just another point. You can see he is falling back from the sixth position of Lopez. He is running out of drivers to pass up. And at this point, he might be at risk of being passed. And that would set him further back, but Knox has the advantage of having cars to pass. Meanwhile, back at the front, Shane Borland hasn't let another driver lead a lap this race. And this is kind of astounding. In first practice, he was last among the full-timers in the leaderboard. In final practice, only 22nd. We don't know where that speed came from that he was able to qualify on the pole and then lead this entire race. But this is astounding by the driver that's really trying to make a playoff push. That team must have been working all night trying to find something to get that car speed in both qualifying and the race. And he has shown it in both the short and the long run. Knox just one point in between him and Martin as he continues to try to chase down the driver in front of him. Ryan Kendall in the fourth position. Pennsylvania driver looking like he's on pace to get his first top 10 of the season as, as well as Bacellia. Great runs for both of them if they finish off that way, although I'm sure Kendall would have loved to get a win in his home state and obviously that have bigger repercussions as that would likely put him into the playoffs he entered this he entered this race 23rd in points so I can't imagine that a win wouldn't put, keep him in the top 25 
Here comes Kenny Knox. He's working his way under Justin McCona, and that is going to put him tied once again at the cut line. All he needs to do is tie at, at this rate, and Alonso having a little bit of a bad run on that outside corner. I wonder if he hit the wall. Several positions dropped for Alonso. He might have damage. That might help out Kenny Knox as the 37's on the outside line. And he's going to make that move, and Knox is into the playoffs at the moment. Five laps to go from Nazareth. Five laps to go in this regular season. And this playoff spot is coming down to one point, and Martin has no one to pass up. He is still just as far back from Lopez as he was just a few laps ago, and Sparky's still hot on his tail. Meanwhile, Knox, he might be able to pass up Dwayne Calloway. And it looks like he's going to get that pass. Extends that points lead, that point gap over to two. The more he runs, the more he continues to build the gap up. Crash in front of him. Tyler Reed into the wall. More cars collected. Kyle Law gets into the back of Chris Harley, and this could end the race. Four laps to go, and as they take the caution, they're not going to get it restarted. Shane Borland takes the yellow flag. And it looks like the 60 car is going to win this race. And that might have just confirmed the three drivers that are going to make it in on points that haven't already been confirmed. Noah Kim with heavy damage. He was a bit of a long shot, but he is not going to be able to make it. Dwayne Calloway going to be up in smoke. He's already clinched in. Tyler Reed obviously looked like he was the first one to get collected. Jason Thales was running the back of the field. But it's Shane Borland that's out in front and looking likely to take this victory. Even a good finish would have helped him get into the playoffs. But it looks like he might walk away with a win. Three bonus points to carry into the first round. Let's see what happened here. And it's Steve Ray. Basically the same accident we saw in the middle part of the race with 19 car fan and Joey Radcliffe. Another hard hit. Tyler Reed actually gets on his side with that hit. Lucky to stay back on all four tires. But you see Chris Hawley jams on the brakes. Dwayne Calloway trying to make it through. He's going to run right into the 92. Noah Kim into the back of him. Alonzo's going to barely hold up on that one, as well as Austin Rogers. Then Harley hits the 92, and Kyle Law kind of ran in there. We obviously know that Law is on probation, but I don't imagine that's going to have any effect on that one. Looks like some more contact up there between Ray and Rogers. And then Roadback and Dale's getting stuck there. Here's from another angle of that big hit that the 92 car takes. So a couple of part-timers tangling. Likely going to end this one under caution. Several cars involved in that one. A few onboards. Noah Kim. Thought he's going to be safe on the outside line. They both run into a couple of cars. Kyle Law. Now, looking a little further back, we saw Alonzo kind of fade back through the field. Didn't really pay much attention to it, but it looks like kind of in a similar situation to the other two incidents of the night. Alonzo goes deep into the corner while Harley was shallow and big hit by the 37 car into the outside wall, trying to get everything he can out of that race car to try to get his way into the playoffs. And obviously, he's going to fall short tonight. As you can see, the white flag is out. The lights are still flashing, which means this one is going to end under caution after they complete this final lap. Shane Borland came in here 12th in points, just below the cut line. Jacob Rose was in that position. That was above the line. Borland just one point behind him. Rose getting collected in the accident. If he had just had a solid day, if he had run runner-up, 
he still had the possibility of making the playoffs, but he ends up going for the victory with a ton of speed in both sessions. Qualifying and the race, he did not slow down one bit, and that is going to pay dividends for the 60 car as he is going to clinch his way into the playoffs. Coming around and to the checkered flag, Shane Borland going to be your winner at Nazareth. And that should confirm that our drivers also making the playoffs. Kyle Wall and John Gilbert should be able to clinch on their wins. So Robert Harrison, Eric Van Arsdale, and Kenny Knox should be your final three making the field. But Shane Borland able to take refuge in his victory tonight at Nazareth. Going to give that team a lot of confidence as they put two of the four Western Motorsports cars into the playoffs. So a look at how this all ended up. Shane Borland on top. Kyle Buscelli and Ryan Kendall getting their first top tens of their careers. TJ Ball also able to slip into the top five along with Alexander Rowe. Three drivers that are mathematically ineligible to make the playoffs. They were able to get up there in the top five. Great runs by them. Unfortunate they couldn't find that speed earlier in the season. Craig Martin so close to making the playoffs. He was right there on that cut line. However, Kenny Knox was able to get an advantage off of those drivers that crashed. By avoiding those accidents, he was able to get away with the spot. So the 82 car going to be on the outside looking in for the final seven races. Just outside of the top 10, Colin Lindsay with a solid 11th place night, but obviously a big disappointment that he's not going to be a part of the playoffs. Robert Harrison, one of those drivers that makes it in, was able to finish in the 15th spot. Al Callaway had a, a chance to make it in tonight. He ends up in 18th place. That's not going to be good enough. Kenny Knox, after being in the back of the field for most of the race, he ends up in the 22nd position. Along with Eric Van Arsdale in 23rd, those two are advancing. And look at some of the drivers that ended up crashing out and the ones that dropped out in that final accident. Kyle Law, Dwayne Callaway, Tyler Reed, and Noah Kim. Obviously, Kim's season went sour quickly and he is not going to be a part of these playoffs. While Kyle Law and Dwayne Callaway, they were able to get in with their victories. Jacob Rose unable to make it as he had a solid chance of going in, as well as 19 car fan. Those drivers both within the top 16 as they entered this race in points. You know, Connor Mays finishing 41st. Doesn't matter to him, even though he was leading the points. He is still going to be in because of those points that he accumulated throughout the season. Here are the raw standings before we take a look at the chase grid. Connor Mays, even though he finished 41st, he's still going to be the points leader. Leading at the end of the regular season, Chris Hawley 13 points behind, but these all these top 10 are going to make the playoffs, so great runs by them. Shane Borland jumps all the way up from 12th to 6th in this final race. And here are your final two playoff drivers, Kyle Law and John Gilbert. Craig Martin ultimately ended up 7 points outside of Kenny Knox, so obviously that final crash giving him a few extra positions. Moving back to the 20s, obviously those accidents did no good to 19 car fan or Noah Kim who were in contention up there in the top 20 entering this race, but they are going to drop back because they wrecked out. And a final six full-timers and a few of the part-timers. As we mentioned, Kyle Buscelli, Alexander Rowe, and TJ Ball all having very solid days to gain them a few points this season. So here is what the playoff pitcher looks like entering Nashville. Chris Harley and Kyle Law with the early advantage because they won two races throughout the regular season. They'll start six points above the cut line some of those one-time winners end up three points ahead, while the four drivers that made it in on points alone, they're going to start three behind. Connor Mays, Robert Harrison, Eric Van Arsdale, and Kenny Knox all going to start a hole entering the first race of the playoffs. Quick look at the team standings as it runs. Ramco Motorsports still out ahead over Coca Racing and Gardner Racing. Sparky having a solid night in the top 10. And here's how they're going to line up for the Elite Cup Series race in just a few moments, and these will be rearranged by how they'll start in the playoffs. So Chris Harley and Kyle Law are going to have the early advantage out in front. Well, some of those winners are going to be seeded out by how they finished in points. But we'll also have a few appearances by our non-playoff drivers and Craig Martin and Ray Chapman going to be able to try to qualify for the regular season finale of the Elite Cup Series. Excitement all around in this final race of the Amateur Cup Series regular season. 12 drivers are now locked into the playoffs. And that is going to set off a seven-race sprint to try to get the first Amateur Cup Series title. We will see 
over that span who was able to take it home, who gets to the championship four. But that is a little bit ways away. We will see you all at our next Amateur Cup Series event at Nashville in a couple streams time. However, coming up next, it's the Elite Cup Series regular season finale at Nazareth. From everyone at NFR and NRV, and we hope you enjoyed tonight's race, and we will see you all next time.